So Earth goes around the sun annually, and that gives rise to the, the things that we see in terms of the shifting sky uh, a little bit every day. Uh, so every night's a little bit different from the night that came before. And, uh, but we also realize that the Earth going around the sun the, because the tilt of the earth that gives rise to seasons the sunlight sun shines more in the southern hemisphere that makes it warm there and less on the northern hemisphere makes it cooler or the other way around it shines more on the northern hemisphere and less on the southern hemisphere so that makes it summer in the north and winter in the south uh, but we also know the earth's orbit is elliptical and so i often ask students well when are we actually closest to the sun well to answer that we need to say a couple more things about elliptical orbits because uh, this relates to all kinds of orbits, not just the orbit of Earth around the sun. It's also orbit of the other planets around the sun or, or the orbit of the moon around the Earth. Okay, so we know that Earth's going around the sun, you know, gives us the seasons. It gives us the seasons because of how it shines either on one hemisphere or the other hemisphere primarily. And so we've already talked about that. But as far as the orbit of the Earth here, elliptical uh, apsides are the the uh, the extremes of an ellipse. So this is from mathematics. So the periapsis is the place where the the ellipse comes closest to the thing that's going around, and apapsis is where the ellipse is farthest from the thing that's going around. So for an orbit around the sun, the thing that you're going around here is the sun. So that's going to be the sun right here. Okay, and so when the planet is at perihelion, that's going to be the closer to the sun. Well, at periapsis is the closest to the thing you're going around. Helios is Greek for sun, so perihelion is the closest to the sun. Aphelion is the farthest from the sun. And so uh, you can look uh, on a table uh, of, 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 of the orbit of the Earth, and it will tell you what, when we're at perihelion and aphelion. And so as Earth goes around the sun, then this, this, this shifts a little bit. So the perihelion in 2017 was January 4th, and the aphelion was uh, July 3rd, and then these are the distances that are there. Now, the interesting thing is this shifts a little bit every year, so look at the next year, 2018, and you notice that the distances are very slightly different, and the dates are a little bit different. We're actually at perihelion a little earlier, uh, January 3rd, and we're a little farther at aphelion, uh, July 6th. And then July, January 3rd for perihelion in 2019, July 5th for aphelion, and then 2020, a little bit later that we were at perihelion, January 5th, and a little bit earlier, July 4th for the aphelion. So now the question is, when are we closest to the sun? And students often get this wrong because they think well, we've got to be close to the sun in, in, in the summer. Well, uh, we're closer to the sun in January. Okay. Well, technically, I guess that's summer for the southern hemisphere. We're farthest from the sun in July. Okay. So uh, that's not in the winter time. Well, in the southern hemisphere, it's winter time. But uh, for us, it's not winter time. So this is like a shock to people because you, you, you're here in Texas. It's hot and humid and miserable in the summer. So you think we've got to be close to the sun. You know, we're actually farthest from the sun in, in July. We're closest in January. Uh, the other question that would I I'll ask is, we'll get back to this in a second. Uh, why? Why are we, uh, why, why, why is this like this? Why, why are the seasons not lining up the way you think they are? Well, remember, it's the tilt of the earth that makes the seasons, not the distance. Well, one question that, that I ask uh, when we're in class is, well, why do these distances and dates change ever so slightly? As earth goes around the sun, what could be altering the orbit a little bit so that it speeds up, slows down, and wanders a little bit in and out uh, uh, to make these numbers slightly different? So what could be affecting Earth and its orbit?
And so you think about it, what could possibly have an effect on Earth? Well, it's got to be something else. So what outside of Earth could be affecting and pulling on Earth? Well, the moon. The moon pulls on Earth. And so what actually happens is as the moon goes around the Earth, it causes the Earth to wobble in its orbit. So, so when, when Earth is going around the sun, it's not really going around the sun in a smooth orbit. It's really uh, uh, kind of wavering a little bit like this as it goes around the sun. It's actually uh, got kind of a wiggly orbit around the sun, speeding up and slowing down uh, as it goes. And, and speeds up and slows down because when you're closer, you're going faster, and when you're farther, you're going slower. So it speeds up and slows down a little bit, and and that means that that these dates here shift ever so slightly. They don't shift very much. We are always closest to the sun in January, and we're always farthest from the sun in July. Those factors don't change. What changes is the exact date in January, the exact date in July. And it doesn't change very much. You know, it's always, you know, only a few days one way or the other. So, you know, you usually July 4th, give or take a couple of days, or we're July, uh, January 4th, give or take a couple of days. And so that that's fairly consistent in there. Uh, but the exact day and the exact time on that day shifts because of Earth's wiggly orbit. And the distances also shift a little bit uh, because of Earth's wiggly orbit. And again, they don't shift by an enormous amount, but they do shift by uh, a, a little bit. So that, that's something. As I said, though, it's the tilt that causes the seasons. So at the winter solstice, that's winter in the northern hemisphere, the sunlight is hitting mainly on the southern part of the Earth, and the northern part gets less light. In fact, if you look at this, we spend more hours in dark than we do day. The, uh, more, uh, the day is where your sunlight's hitting, hitting you, warming you up, and at night you're radiating energy off into space, cooling off. So that's why it tends to be cooler. You know, one day like that doesn't do much, two days, three days, a week, two weeks, a month. You know, over time, it gradually cools off. Likewise, at the summer solstice, the, the sunlight is hitting the northern hemisphere more, and we spend more hours in the day than we do at night. So there's more hours warming than cooling. And so the, the, we call a hysteresis effect. This starts adding up, and eventually that means that it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter. Okay. Uh, uh, likewise, you know, we talked here, you know, Northern Hemisphere, you know, the North Pole, the sun never hits it for, for months at a time. Uh, um, and the South, South Pole, the sun's hitting it for months at a time, you know, in the wintertime uh, or summertime, dep uh, uh, depending what, what you're talking about. And then likewise, six months later, when the Northern Hemisphere gets, gets sunlight, the Northern North Pole gets, gets months on end of sunlight and the South Pole gets months on end of darkness. Well, back to this orbital thing. There's an interesting thing here. As Earth goes around the sun, it, it's, it's, it's closer and farther, okay? And, and we, we, uh, we know that we happen to be at aphelion, farthest from the sun, when it's summertime. So this is aphelion right here, and this is perihelion right here. So perihelion occurs the closest to the sun when it's winter time in the northern hemisphere. This is January in the northern hemisphere, summertime in the southern hemisphere. And aphelion is the farthest from the sun, so it's summertime in the northern hemisphere, wintertime in the southern hemisphere. But remember I said gravity is what makes us go around. Gravity is stronger at perihelion. And so Earth actually goes faster in this part of the orbit. And it goes slower in this part of the orbit. And so what that means is that, that we're going slower at aphelion, faster at perihelion. So elliptical orbits do this. They speed up and slow down. And so all elliptic orbits do this. You know, all the planets do this. The moon has a slight elliptic orbit, and it speeds up and slows down a little bit as it goes around the Earth because of the same effect. Well, wait a minute. Um, 
equinox to equinox, you would expect that's half an orbit, it'd be six months. Except it's not. Because Earth goes faster when it's close to the sun, and it goes slower when it's farther from the sun. Do you ever get the feeling that here in Texas, the summers are really long? You know, it's hot, 100 degree days, it just seems to go on forever. Well, you know what? A lot of that is perception, but not all of it. If you actually look at a calendar and count how long it is from the spring, the vernal equinox, first day of spring until first day of fall, that actually is about a week longer than the fall to spring. So yes, the summers are actually longer than the winters in Texas because we are going slower in this part of the orbit than we do when we're close to the sun. So, so it's not entirely your imagination. It really is longer. And so uh, uh, that, and that's true for all the, the orbits. They speed up and slow down as they go around.